Hi, I'm Yalini, and today we're going to be talking about the RC522 RFID module. Let's start off with kind of understanding why we use RFID and where it's used and how it works. So the RFID is mainly used for authentication purposes. For example, when you tap your card to pay or you swipe your card to gain access to a room. For example, at Carlton, we have our Carlton cards, we swipe them, and only if we're authorized, we can enter that room. So how does the reader know where we swipe it? How does that reader know whether we are authorized to enter the room? Well, let's begin with how does RFID work? RFID works using tra passive transpondence. So the card we're swiping or tapping or the tag we're reading ha is a passive transponder. Basically, when this reader transmits a signal, it at a certain frequency, for this case it would be 13.56 megahertz for the RC522 module. So when the reader outputs the signal at the specific frequency, the passive transponder receives it, and then whatever information is encoded into it, it kind of changes the signal to reflect that information and sends it back to the reader. So once that reader receives this signal, it's able to decode it, get the information, and compare it to see, for example, whether the user is authorized to enter the building. So that's kind of a basic idea on how RFID works and where it is used. So for my project, I used it uh, to authenticate the cats who wanted to enter a cat door. So I used it for, I used little tags um, that I wrote certain serial numbers into, and then when it came close to the reader, uh, it would read the serial number and determine whether the cat was authorized to enter. So a couple of features that this uh, RFID module has is that uh, it's perfect to work with a Raspberry Pi as it operates from in between 2.5 volts to 3.3. Uh, for us, we use the 3.3 volt pin on the Raspberry Pi. And it also has it has three different communication protocols that it implements. So you can either use SPI, I2C, or UART. I used SPI, and that's what I will be demonstrating to you guys today um, on how to connect it to your Raspberry Pi through SPI. And the reading range, so the max range that this module can read from is five centimeters, which is not too far, um, unfortunately, but uh, if you want a farther range, you have to buy a more expensive reader. <laughs> unfortunately. All right, so now I'm going to move on to kind of explain what each one of these pins on here does. So as we can see, you can see the SS, um, SCK, MOSI, MISO, and all those. Let's start with VCC. The VCC pin here is the power. This is your power source, and it will connect to the pin um, 1, on your uh, Raspberry Pi. Next, we have the reset pin. The reset pin is basically used when you want to reset or power down the module. For example, you want to just kind of like something's not working right, it's not reading right now, you just want to reset the module without you know having to take out the wires and reconfigure it and that sort of stuff. The third one here is the ground pin. Let me put reset over here. That's the ground pin, it connects to ground. It's pretty self-explanatory there. This one is the IRQ or interrupt pin. Unfortunately, the Raspberry Pi doesn't support the interrupt, it's more for Arduino, so it's not much use for us. But uh, if it were to work, then it would be used to basically, it would wake up the module whenever something came in range of the reader. So if a tag came, you know, like five centimeters away, it'll be like, okay, I need to go and read this. Next, we have the MISO pin. So it does different things based on what communication you're using. So the MISO pin, when used for SPI communication, is uh, used for... Is just as a communication bus from I believe it is from the reader to the Raspberry Pi and 
and for the MOSI is from the Raspberry Pi to the reader or the module. But when it comes to I2C, it acts as a serial clock. And when it comes for um, when it comes to UART, it acts as a transmitter. The MOSI pin is used uh, is the master out slave in pin for SPI communication, so the RPI to the reader. Now the SCK, I don't have room here, I'll just pull it out here, is your serial clock. So it just, it's basically uh, provides a clock source uh, for synchronization purposes. And the last one here is the SS pin, which again has a different purpose for different communication. Uh, for SPI, it is a serial input. For SDA, it, it acts as a SDA for I2C and a receiver for UART. So it's got a lot of it's got a lot of range of different con communication protocols you can implement, which is good for the Raspberry Pi because it only has two SPI buses, and uh, that way you can always put it on I2C. UART is a bit tricky with the Raspberry Pi. I would usually just recommend sticking to either I2C or SPI. All right, the next part of the video is I'm gonna show you how to actually connect this module to your Raspberry Pi. So over here, I have my RFID module that's connected to a separate breadboard. And then we have our breakout board connected to another breadboard. I've just done it like this so we can better see how the wires will be connected. Let's start off by first connecting some wires to all the pins on the RFID module, except the IRQ pin, because as I said earlier, we can't use interrupts with the Raspberry Pi. So just gonna... Now, we're going to take the first wire, this one, that is connected to the, uh, the power supply, which will be connected to pin 1 here, right there, and next we'll take our reset pin and connect it to pin 22. A trick I like to do is, I know on this side, it's all the even numbers of the pins, and that side is the odd and everything is times two, right? So I'll find pin 11, and I know that will be pin 22. It's kind of a neat little trick I do. Next to pin six, so that would be third row, and on the other side would give me pin six. That was our ground that we connected to pin six there. Next, the MISO pin gets connected to pin 21, so it would be the 11th pin on this side right there after the miso we have the mosi which will be connected to pin 19 so 10 but on this side it's pin 19 and after that we have the serial clock pin which will be connected to pin 23 so if that was 22 this would be 23 and the last one we'll be connecting is the SDA, which goes to pin 24. Should be right here. And that's that. That's how you connect your RFID module to your Raspberry Pi using a breakout board. All right, so this is the fritzing diagram for the setup I showed you earlier, as well as the schematic view. I've also listed out what pin connects to what pin on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I will also post a link to the tutorial that I followed um, it's very helpful, as well as a link to the features and more explanation on how the RFID module is used and what features the specific RC522 RFI module has. And if I scroll below, this is the code you will need to implement on your Raspberry Pi to read and write to the tag or the card that comes with this module. So feel free to pause the video, copy the code. I will also add the code in the description below.
Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a great day. Thank you.